Hello and welcome back to this series of videos for new beekeepers. Today we're in the workshop at Cotswold Bees for a much requested video on how to assemble frames. First of all let's have a look at the equipment that you need to be able to do it. It's pretty simple and straightforward but really makes your life easier. We need a small stubby screwdriver, again any screwdriver will do but a, a little stubby one like this is, is really good. A small hammer, I've got this old tack hammer that uh, was my dad's, it's an old brass tack hammer, works really well for that sort of thing. But again, just a small hammer's great. You need a knife, a craft knife of some description, and a pair of pliers, preferably with a wire cutter in them, uh, just for nipping off any uh, nails that come through. And of course, the two most important bits of equipment at all, we've got a cup of tea, and we've got a cake, and today's cake is a Friand, and that is uh, the recipe again on the website. These are really great. They've got the homegrown Tayberries in and lots of almonds. So those are the most important things. So I'm just gonna have a quick cup of tea. I'll have a bite of my cake, and then we'll, uh, we'll start on assembling the frames. That's it, that really is good. When you buy the kit from the beekeeping suppliers, you get three main parts. This is the top bar, we've got the two bottom bars, and the two side bars. So this is for a brood frame because we've got the deep side bars. So the first thing to do is we're gonna take the bottom bar and we've got a flappy bit on here and we need to break this flappy bit off. And this is where our screwdriver comes in handy. We just pop it in, just twist it, and that will come off. Now you'll notice that here I've got a rough bit of wood along there and really what I want to do is just take that off, keep my finger out of the way but I'm trying to do it for the camera. So I'm going to just actually remove that bit of wood along there. It just makes life easier when you come to put the wax in. There we go. So much easier when you're not doing this for a camera. So you're going to put your top bar flat on the bench or the table, whatever you're using. And here we've got the sidebars. Now one side of the sidebar has got a groove in and that groove needs to be on the inside. So we're just simply going to push those in there. They can be a bit tight but that pushes in nicely there. I've got the other side, again groove side in and that's just going to push in there. Again, they can be a bit tight, but you actually want them to be a bit tight. That's quite useful if they are. And then we'll take one of the bottom bars and we're gonna put it in the back part of the sidebar. Like that. And then we're just gonna put our first nails in. So I'm just gonna put a nail in here to hold that in place. There we go. And of course, we actually don't do this like this anymore. We've got an air gun to do it. But when I had up to 15 hives, this is the way I'd build all my frames. I'm gonna secure this at the other end, again with a nail. And so long as you've got the right size wax, you can do this. If you're in doubt about the size of the wax, you might want to leave one side unnailed, but it does make life more difficult afterwards. So that's our starting point. We then need to take a sheet of wax. This is wired deep foundation wax. And what you'll see with the wires is you've got three loops here that extend beyond the wax. And it's very important that you bend these loops over. So like that. And then we're gonna take this wax and we're gonna slide it in with the loops facing towards us. So it goes into the sides. It's always best to do this when the wax isn't too warm, otherwise you'll find it'll flex all over the place. So there we go. We've now got our wax in. Next thing to do is take the other bottom bar and pop it in. And that fits nicely. I can now put the other two nails in here. So here we go. 
just pop this nail in here and another one at the other end next thing to do is take the piece that we cut off and that's going to go in there and again quite a tight fit if these have been made properly that goes in there nicely then what we've got to do with the nails here is we've got to nail them into the bottom there so that it goes at an angle like this and nails through the loop that we actually folded over so this might be quite difficult to do without actually getting my fingers completely in the way but I'm going to try so here we go you can see it's going in at an angle and that should have gone through that loop and I need to put two more nails in again at an angle one through each of those loops fortunately it's softwood so you can just if you've got fingers of the right type you can just push the nail in a little bit before you nail it in take the next one again make sure this is in place take the next nail and again I'm going to put it in at an angle nail it through at an angle then all I've got to do now is put a nail in each of these corners so the first one I'm going to put in here this is on the flat of the Hoffman spacer so this is the easier of the ones to do so in it goes I now need to put one in the other side and the other side is has got a point on it so I normally just give it a quick tap just to give me something a little bit flatter put the nail on nail through turn it over and do exactly the same on the other side so on the point side just give it a quick bash there nail through and then I've just got to put one in on the flat side here so here now what you'll find is that's all done however what I've done here is one of these nails that I put through I've got too shallow or too uh, shallow an angle and it's just sticking out there so all I'm going to do is just nip the end off with those pliers I could do that and, and nip that off and that's off there and now I've got my frame completed all ready to go into the hive and all's well in the world and so that's how we're going to do a deep frame for the brood box so we've completed a brood frame and now we need to have a look at how we do a super frame now if I'm doing a super frame that's wired it's exactly the same as we've just done with the brood frame but what we're going to look at here is how to put a super frame together where we're using unwired foundation and we'll use unwired foundation if we're looking to do cut comb so what we're going to do is come down here and have a look at the component parts again so for the super frame the parts are pretty much the same we've got a top bar we've got two bottom bars and the only difference is the side bars which are much shallower here I'm using the Hoffman self spacers again um, but you can use the normal flat ones but they'll just be shallower along the side there so here we go we're going to take the frame again the bit that's loose there we're going to take the screwdriver just pop it in and twist it the reason we don't just pull this off is because if we just pulled it like that they do tend to snap so we just take that off nicely like that again we've got this little bit of rough wood on the inside and take my knife and just carefully take that out 
so that's nice and smooth ready for the the wax and then I can put my sidebars in again groove side in and they're quite tough but you can put them in this one goes in again groove side in and the thing is if they're really tough and you want to give them a bit of help with a hammer whatever you do don't hit them from this side because you're likely to damage this area here instead turn them the other way up make that nice and flat and just go onto the flat there and that goes in nicely without actually damaging the top bits here I just need to put that back in a little bit more there there we go and that's absolutely in so just the same as before I'm now going to take my bottom bar I'm going to put it in here take a nail and nail it through there and again take a nail and nail it through the other side Where you get one that bends out slightly, the top bar is slightly shorter, just once you've got the nail in, grip it and do that, and that's fine. I can now put the piece of wax in. Now I'm going to use unwired wax here. If I was using wired wax, I'd do it exactly the same as I did with the brood, turn over the, the loops and put it in that way. But with unwired wax, pop it into the sliders on the side. Now again, it's really good to be using wax that's a little bit on the cool side because otherwise it will really be quite difficult and it might uh, bend too much. So I'm going to pop the wax in there and then I'm going to put in the other bottom bar like that and I'm going to nail it exactly the same as I did before. So just pop a nail in here and one in the other end. So there we go. I can put this piece in. Thing is, I don't have to worry too much about the angle of the nails this time. It's good to angle them slightly because it's just easier to put them in. Here we go with the, the nail there and I'm just going to pop that in. The other thing is if you're using these longer nails and you don't put them in at an angle what will happen is they will come out the other side and you will need to cut them off. With the unwired ones I only use two nails in the, in the bottom it's uh, perfectly okay. Here we go. So, whoops. You can tell I haven't done this for a while with, uh, with a hammer and nails. So that's pretty much exactly the same as we did before. Thing is though, this can be quite loose at the top here. So what we're going to do is put a nail through here just to hold this wax in place. So just to roughly in the middle, pop the nail in. Make sure, make sure that goes through the wax and then that hold that really nice and solid there. And then the minute I can just nip the other side of that nail off with the uh, the pliers and then just to finish off the same as we did with the brood frame I need to put nails in the sides here so I'm just going to put myself a little flat on there get myself a nail nail it on here ended up getting two nails there just pop the nail in there Then do the one on this side here. Oops, a daisy. Now I made a bit of a hack of that. 
and that's often the case especially with the longer nails so I'm just going to bend that back up there we go that goes in there I can now do the same on the other side you can see that nails come through there I've got to nip that off in a minute put my flat on there put my nail in one more nail in on the other side and then I can just nip that nail off with my pliers there nipped off and nice and flat and so now I've got my frame with my unwaxed foundation in. There's various other ways of doing it, people will argue long into the night, but so long as the wax is secure within the frame and the frame is good and solid, that's the main thing. That's the way we like to make up our frames here. I say we do them with a, a, an air gun now because we do so many, but to be honest, for just doing a, a few tens or even a, a couple of hundred frames, uh, hammer and nails is perfectly good. So there we are, that's how to build frames, and I hope you found that really informative. So if we can come back up to me, Carol, before we go. Thanks very much for watching the channel. We really appreciate it if you've already subscribed. If you haven't, then please subscribe. That would be great. It really helps us with our figures. Thumbs ups are always welcome. Comments, if you would, please. That's also great. Yes, we know there's other ways of doing it, and you probably may have your own way, but this is a, a quick and easy way of doing it, and we've found this efficient over the years. So once again, thanks very much for watching the channel, and we look forward to seeing you on our next beekeeping video. And until then, happy beekeeping.